Christmas. Good morning, Merry everybody. Christmas. <laughs> Merry Good Christmas. Good morning. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Christmas at the Creek. You yes. are finally here, and I'm obviously excited. How yes. are you, Wes? I am so excited. It is Christmas time. It's Christmas! <laughs> we have the Grinch on the patio. We have an inflatable gingerbread man that I can Woo. just, I just hear him. The elf showed up at my house this week, so, the elf. you know. <laughs> the elf. elf. Our elf is not mischievous, thank goodness. Our elf is She not is well behaved, either. so... Ours is as well. Well, hey, we are so glad so that glad you are here. here with us today. It is going to be a great day. And what I'm most excited... A great, a great month at the Greek. It's, it's just here. So much going on. It's time. So we're glad you're here. If you're watching online, if you're at the South Augusta campus, at our, yes. at our Grovetown campus, wherever you're watching, we're so glad you're here today. If it's your first time, because we know a lot of people check out a new church around Christmas time. We get it. That's perfectly fine. And we're glad you are checking us out today. We'd love to get to know you better. Absolutely. Just fill out the connection card that's on the seat in front of you or online. You can text CONNECT to our super secret Christmas number. It's 706-222-7123. Absolutely. Like Wes said, we're so glad that you are here. Wes, tell us what's happening today at the Creek. Today, today at the Creek? Today at the Creek. Well, we are starting our Christmas series, finally. Finally. Because Christmas has been going on all week at the Creek already. Right. So we're finally doing a Christmas Sunday. And you know what? We're kicking it off right with baptism 36 people across our campuses huge so huge day and the way that happens is because you invite people and people are more welcome to an invite this time yeah, of year than really any other time of year right. so get out there invite people we have invite cards we that you can pick up pass out leave it in your leave it in your um, lunch thing and you know oh, oh, oh. sorry i got distracted well, hey. Merry, merry christmas, christmas. Merry christmas. Grinch, what possibly could distract you Yes, the Whovilles here. Are we still on time? Listen, you're never late. You are never late at the creek. We oh, are glad you that you are about? here. What are we telling? We everybody? are talking about the things that are coming up. Exactly, and today is Grinchmas. It's in Merry Christmas. Christmas. I know that guy. You do. <laughs> right, very you well. do. So make sure your kids are in Creek Kids. And is there somebody who you would like to shout out today? Is there anybody you'd like to shout out? Yes, my grandma. Hey, Grandma, if you're watching this, I hope you have a good church service, and I love you. Oh. Well, that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. That's the best thing I've ever heard. My goodness. Well, hey, we're glad that you're here today. Why don't you get back outside okay. and greet some people? Is everybody coming to church? Everyone's coming to church. Right, very good. There's going to be... Yeah. Uh, very good. So Woo. when you invite people to church, you people like never that show up. know who is going to be here. You literally never know. You literally never know. Never know oh, 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 oh. who might show up at Christmas Eve. I so love it. Make sure you get those get Christmas Eve on your plans too. Yes. So Creek. I don't Kids, even know where we are right now. I don't now. either. Christmas. I'm going to rein it back in. Okay, Creek Kids pull it in. Yes. has so much going on this month for your kids. So make sure that you grab a calendar, letting um, letting you know everything that's happening next week. They're doing like funky socks, Christmas socks. Mm -hmm. But there's another next generation that I want to talk about, okay. and that is our young adults. Okay. On December 14th, they are having a Christmas jam here, okay. and so that is for 18 to 30 year olds. Like and then jelly. Listen, if there's jelly, I'm coming. <laughs> I'll just spoon it. I love jelly. <laughs> Maybe some pepper jelly. Pe oh, okay. pepper jelly. Man. <laughs> On collard greens. Okay. Get we back, are get so off it. track today. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And then also this Wednesday is United Night. Okay. And so if you have a student, you are going to want them to be here. They are having new merch. Okay. A snowball fight. What? If I'm coming If it feels to that. like it does today, I don't know how that's going to work, <laughs> but a snowball fight. And they're also having a very special choir. And so if Ooh. you have a student that can sing, or maybe not... They can go to the link in the bio of the Stevens Creek Students Instagram and sign up. Okay, they probably the know how to do all that. I, ooh, ooh. That's social media. I can't. Do I know. Social and we media. also we can't forget to mention that next week is one of our favorite days at the church, December tenth, Creek Christmas Blast. Yes. We're gonna have food trucks, boiled peanuts, boiled peanuts, free kids meals, and the best, possibly only, but best fireworks show. In town, in Christmas town. fireworks show. So it make is. plans. That's next next Sunday night at the Augusta campus, 5 to 7 p.m. Yeah. The kids love it. They go home. They don't go to bed afterwards. It's, I'm you know. super excited about that. One other thing that we definitely want to mention is our Glory CD okay. is available at the Info Center for $5. And so Pastor Todd is singing one of these songs today, so make sure that you stop and grab one. Yeah. But right now, what we are most excited for is worship. And so if you will go ahead and stand up on your feet. Yep. Merry Christmas. 
Hey, good morning, church. Come on, let's stand on your feet. Put your hands on it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature see, and heaven and nature see.
makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. And just one word, you hear what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. you, but I'm so thankful that we serve a God that there's nothing too big for him, nothing that is too hard for him, nothing that surprises him, but he's almighty, he's all-knowing, and he's in this place today. Aren't you glad of that today? Let's just give him praise one more time. So worthy. Amen. Well, hey, I'm Todd. I'm one of the pastors here. I'd like to welcome you today, all those watching online. Thanks for being with us, but it's going to be a great day. You picked a great day to be here because we're starting our Christmas series today, and there's nothing like Christmas at the creek. Over the next few weeks, we're going to have great Christmas messages. We're going to have Christmas music, um, and it's just going to build up to our Christmas Eve services, and then obviously celebrating Christmas Day, hopefully with our families and friends, um, and just what Jesus has done for us. And so, it's an incredible time. But what I do know about busy seasons like this is that so often that we can do all the busy and forget what the real reason of the busyness is all about. And it's about Jesus. It all comes down to Jesus, that God sent his son for us as a baby on that first Christmas, and so that we can have life, so that we can have freedom, so that we can have hope, 
so that we can have Emmanuel, God with us. And so what I want us to do over the next few minutes as we sing, but as we start this Christmas season, I want us just to make a commitment that every day we're just gonna pause and we're gonna say, God, thank you for sending Jesus for me. Thank you for sending hope and joy through your son, Jesus. Because if we're not careful, we, we'll just get so busy buying all the presents, doing all the parties, doing all the events, that we really don't have room for the reason for the season, and that is Jesus. So as we sing today, as we worship, as you go throughout this month of December, just pause every day and just say, God, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. And I'm gonna make room for you in my life. I'm gonna make room for you in my family, in my busyness, for you to come and do something in us. So that's my prayer. I hope that's your prayer. So sing this out together. Let's surrender ourselves to Jesus today.
whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, I will make room for you. That's the cry of our heart today. As we come into this season where there could be so many things that take our attention, God, that we would be able to stop every day, we'd pause, and that we'd make room for you. Because you're the reason for the season. You're the reason that we can even be here today. God, we don't take that for granted, and we're just thankful today. We're thankful that, God, you loved us so much that you sent Jesus for us as our Savior, that you sent Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us, that no matter what we might be facing, no matter what we might be going through during this Christmas season, that we can have hope. We can have hope that you are with us. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. So, God, come into our lives today. We make room for you. Come and fill us up with your presence. And God, let us experience you in a whole different way this Christmas season. And we love you, we honor you, we praise you, we give you glory. It's in that strong name of Jesus that we pray and everybody say, amen. Come on, with everything you got, let's just give him praise today. He is worthy of it. God, we thank you. Thanks for worshiping with us. As you're seated, take a look at this uh, uh, promo video for a Christmas blast that's next week. everyone. We're so glad that you're joining here, uh, joining us here today. You know, the Christmas blast, we are, it is fun for the entire family. We're looking forward to it. It's happening next Sunday, December the 10th, right here at our Augusta campus from 5 to 7 p.m. We're going to have the free pictures with Santa, lots of food trucks on site, and from I mean, I think, I may be a little biased, I think we have the best fireworks show in town happening here. So uh, bring your family, bring your friends. Another great event happening next week is on Wednesday. It's for our students. It's our last United Night of the Year. So parents, get your students here. We're gonna have some new merch for sale. And I'm not sure how they're doing this, but there's gonna be a snowball fight. So you students, you don't wanna miss this event. As I mentioned, we're so glad that you're joining us today. The easiest way to get connected here is to text the word CONNECT to that number on the screen, or you can fill out the CONNECT card. There's one on the seat back in front of you. You can take that to our information center where we have a free gift, or you can just simply drop it in the offering bucket as you leave. Another great event uh, for you and your family to get involved with is our Giving Tree Pickup Party. That's happening next Saturday at the Augusta Dream Center. You may have seen all the toys coming in over the last several weeks. Many of you have been so generous. You've sponsored thousands of kids. You've donated toys and coats. And this is an opportunity for you to meet some of those families and help us distribute the toys. So if you'd like to volunteer for this event, you can go to Stevens Creek Church church.com forward slash events. Now, just this last week, we had a very significant day here at the church. We celebrated 
36 years of ministry. Tremendous. That would not be possible without you. You know, no matter how or what you give, we believe that the Lord sees the heart behind your giving. And we can never thank you enough for trusting us with your finances and partnering with us to love God, love people, and to serve the world. You know, every Christmas, we receive a special Christmas Eve offering. And the offering this year is going to strengthen the ministries here at the church. And we are paying down the mortgage. We are believing God for a zero balance mortgage. And I want to invite you to be praying and believing that with us. Now, if you came prepared to give your tithes and your offerings today, there are a few ways you can do that. You can text the word give to that same number. We also have giving kiosk in the lobby, or you can use the offering buckets as you leave. However you choose to give, thank you for your generosity. Enjoy the rest of the service today. Manger now a humble throne, the one who can redeem us all, the greatest love that the world has ever known. Emmanuel. Oh. 
all started on a Saturday night Glory lighting up the desert sky A baby born in a manger filled with hay Well, good morning and welcome to Stevens Creek Church. We're so glad that you're here today. What a beautiful day to be in church. I'd like to welcome all those in our Grovetown campus. I'd like to welcome those in our South Campus, those watching online and on demand. Hey, let me say something to those watching online. Let me, I want to encourage you to come to church this Christmas season. I'm telling you, if you'll do that at one of our campuses, you'll meet some of the finest people in all of Augusta, Georgia. I can assure you of that. For sure. So it's Christmas season. How many of you have already started your Christmas shopping? Anybody here? Oh, yeah, a number of you. Some of you got to get to work now. Now, early in our, our marriage, I thought that shopping would be something that Patty and I would enjoy doing together. And so that would be like one of those events. Now, at that time, I didn't realize that men shop differently than women, right? Because when I thought about shopping, I thought about making a list and then going to the store and checking off every, I'm talking about getting it done. I mean, I could take that whole list and have it done by noon on Saturday. And so I was all about uh, being efficient, being really efficient in the, in the process. Now, Patty is much different. Now, Patty, her shopping is all about the experience, she wants to walk down every aisle. She wants to touch. She wants to feel the fabrics. She wants to talk about it. She wants to talk to other people about it. And then she's going to decide to buy it. And so after a few shopping trips together, Patty realized that we had different approaches, and she uninvited me to go shopping with her. <laughs> so what's your shopping style? Do you like to be efficient or do you like the experience? Turn to the person beside you and tell them if you're like me or if you're like Patty. But did you hear about the two men that opted to go sailing instead of Christmas shopping with their wives? Yeah, two men opted to go sailing on the lake instead of going Christmas shopping with their, their wives. And while they were out on the lake, they got caught in this violent storm. It was such a violent storm that the boat capsized. And there they are in the freezing waters, holding on to the overturned boat, floating towards shore. It was miserable out there. And then one looked at the other and said, you know what? This is better than Christmas shopping. <laughs> well, today we're starting a brand new series called The Gift. And we're going to look at three different gifts that the wise men gave Jesus. Now, some of you may not know the story, but when Jesus was born of a virgin, there were wise men, or some people call the Magi, who were very wealthy, very educated Gentiles that traveled a long way to, to come uh, to see Jesus and to worship him. The wise men, they were celebrities of their day. I mean, uh, they were endowed with great minds and great resources and great opportunities. So today we're going to see Christmas through their eyes. So we're going to open up the Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to read the wise men's story of Christmas. Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of, time of Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. 
They came to Jerusalem and asked, where's the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and we have come to worship him. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and he said, go and make a careful search for the child and as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped. Then they opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, it's interesting as we read this story that, and compare this to the Luke story, we start to see that the, the wise men were not there on Christmas Eve. Oftentimes, we see the nativity set at grandma's house, and we see the wise men and the shepherds, and we see the angels and the farm animals and, and Joseph and Mary and Jesus and so forth. But realistically, the wise men were not there because you notice in the verse here that Jesus was no longer in a stable. He was no longer in a manger, but he was in a house. We also see that Jesus was no longer called a baby, but he was called a child, a young child. Some traditions say it took upwards to two years on the search for the wise men to actually find Jesus. Now, we look at this story and we think, well, of course, there are three wise men because there are three wise men in our nativity set. But tradition tells me that more than likely, they traveled in large groups of people. And so it could be a, a large entourage. We say that there were three wise men because there were three gifts. But it could be even more people than that that came. We know they came from the east, which... Uh, is known as the Orient. There are a lot of things we know about the wise men, but there are a lot of things that we simply do not know. But here's what we do know. The wise men opened their treasures and they presented Jesus with three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, why would they bow down and present these extravagant gifts to a baby? I don't know about you, but when uh, Patty and I had kids, and when they were born, nobody brought us gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but they did bring us some diapers and some onesies and some pacifiers. But the wise men gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and it's important for us to understand the significance behind these events, uh, these gifts. So what do we know about them? We know this, and this is the big idea for the series. Every gift tells a story. Every gift tells a story. Each gift has significance. Each gift served a practical purpose, but it also conveyed a prophetic message. And so today, I'm going to focus on the gift of gold. We're going to look at the gift of gold. Gold is the symbol for royalty. And throughout history, because of the scarcity and the value of gold, gold has been known as a gift that was fit for a king. Even the wise men says, uh, where's the newborn king? Now, when we think about king, different images come to our minds. I mean, if the kids are watching a movie and there's an animal in the movie named Simba, we know that they're watching the Lion King. That's right. And we know that if we go through a drive through and we order a Whopper that you're dining at Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders won't upset us. <laughs> Those folks that are laughing are old. <laughs> now, you know that if, if you are reading a scary novel, it may be written by Stephen King. But when we talk about Jesus as king, we're talking about a king like no other. 
The Jews expected their king to be born surrounded by wealth and surrounded by luxury. They expected him to be born in a crib with with purple linen, maybe even wearing a Gucci onesie or something. I don't know. But nobody expected a king to be born in poverty in a smelly animal stable in Bethlehem. No one could have predicted that the king of glory, the son of God, would befriend prostitutes and touch lepers and stand up for the oppressed. They had never imagined a king that would choose uneducated fishermen and tax collectors and rebellious troublemakers to be his disciples. And no one imagined that an innocent king would be beaten and whipped and scourged and tortured as a suffering servant on a cross. And when he breathed his last breath, no one expected this king to rise from the dead. But three days later, when the women went to the tomb, the stone was rolled away and his body was not there because he had risen. And today, King Jesus sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And one day, as hard as it is for us to imagine, he will return to this earth as a conquering king in victory. And the Apostle Paul describes it just like this. At just the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only Almighty God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. So who is this king that the wise men bowed down and worshiped? He is the king of glory. He is the king of the ages. He is the king of righteousness. He is the king that opened up the blinded eyes. He is the king that unstopped the deaf ears. He is the king that gave hope uh, to the hurting. And he released the captives to freedom. Uh, The devil could not stop him. Death could not defeat him. The grave could not hold him. He is the son of God. He's the savior of the world. And he truly is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. So what's our response to this? Well, let's look and see how the wise men responded. How did the wise men respond? They bowed down. And they worshiped. They bowed down and they worshiped. When we bow down, we physically show humility and respect. When we bow down, we are saying, I acknowledge your authority and I submit to you. I acknowledge your authority and I submit to you. The wise men bowed down and surrendered to Jesus as king. That's the significance of giving him gold. Gold was a gift that was fit for a king. They are saying with this gift that, Jesus, you are the king. We often talk about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is wherever Jesus is king. If he is king in your heart, then the kingdom of God is within you. If he is king in heaven, then the kingdom of God is in heaven. Once again, the kingdom of God is wherever Jesus is king. It is wherever he rules and he reigns. That's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is encouraging us teaching us to pray for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done. Why is that? Because God's will is not always done on this earth. A lot of times you hear people say something when maybe something bad happens. And they'll just try to say something to to make, give it understanding. And they say, well, it must have been God's will. No, it's not. God's will is not evil. Hear that. God's will is never evil. God's will is not sinfulness. God's will is not people making bad decisions. People making bad decisions, that could be my will. Maybe your will, but it's not God's will. God's will is not always done on this earth. That's why we pray, oh God, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. That's why we pray that prayer. The wise men acknowledge that Jesus is king. They bow down. They surrender. Now, listen to me. I believe that every one of us can find peace by surrendering to Jesus today in four ways. Every one of us can find peace by surrendering to Jesus today in four ways. First of all, surrendering to Jesus means letting go of control. Surrendering to Jesus means letting go of control. Every day you have to decide who's going to be in control of your life. You or God. Every day. You have to decide who's going to be in control of your life. You or God. Every day it's a battle. Every day it's a battle. There are things in your life that you don't want to give up control over. If you're like me, you want to control it. You want to be the boss over that situation. And there are verses in the Bible that you would embrace, and then there's another group of verses in the Bible that you would love to take an exacto knife and cut them out because you just don't want to even read those verses. But if we want peace in our lives, we've got to submit, we've got to surrender. And that starts with letting God be God. It starts with surrender. The strongest position that you can be in is the position of complete surrender. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10, he said, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. When we see the words be still, that phrase in the original language, in the Hebrew language, literally means to let go. It literally means to calm down, to relax, to lighten up, to let go. But the truth is we don't like the word surrender. When we think of surrender, we think about waving a white flag, saying, I give up, I forfeit, I lose, I submit. And we struggle with that. I believe that the number one reason that you live under stress is because you are in conflict with God. You're trying to do Things that only God can do. And I can speak as an authority on this because this is what I struggle with. We want to keep our hands on it. We want to control it. We want to control uh, our families. We want to control our work environment. And every time we jump in to control it, we edge God out of the situation, say, I've got this. Think about the word, edge God out, E-G-O. That's your ego. When your ego comes to the forefront, you're edging God out of the situation. He is the king. He's in charge. And if you want peace, you've got to surrender yourself to him and let God direct your steps The wise men bowed down. They surrendered. Here's the second thing. Surrendering to Jesus means learning to be content. Learning to be content. Have you ever heard of the serenity prayer? Many of you have. You often learn this in 12-step programs. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If I'm going to be content, I need to accept the things that I cannot change. If you can change something, then go do it. If you can change something, and if you can make something better, what are you waiting on? Go do it. But there are some things that you just can't. You just can't change, and you've got to come to the place where you learn to accept those things. And if you don't learn to accept it, you're going to be stressed out. 
You're going to be worried. You're going to be angry. And you're going to be really upset. And you're going to have resentment. And all of that's just not going to work. All of that's not going to bring peace to your life. There's really only one thing that works in that situation and um, with those things that you can't change, and that is acceptance, that you learn to be content. Paul understood this. The Apostle Paul, who wrote probably one-fifth of the New Testament, he wrote these words, Philippians chapter 4. He said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. I can do all things through him who gives me the strength. Now, we read these and we use these verses often. But what do we know about this? We know that when Paul wrote these words, he was in a prison cell in Rome. And at this point, he was chained to a Roman soldier in a dark prison. So I believe he knows what he's talking about. And you notice the word learned here. Contentment is a learned experience. You have to learn it. And one of the reasons people struggle with contentment is because they're always looking for an explanation of why did this happen? Why? God doesn't always tell us why things happen. He wants us to learn how to trust him. Here's what I've learned. That when you're going through pain and you're going through difficulty, you don't need God's explanation. You need God's presence. You need God's presence to come and to bring uh, peace on you. You need his presence to fill the room. You need to sense that there is a power greater than yourself. And that power is present in the moment of your suffering. In the moment of your pain. In the moment of your difficulty that God is with you. You need God's presence. How do you get to God's presence? You get to God's presence through praise and worship. Praise, first of all, that you begin to praise him. And you can praise him from afar. But here's what happens. As you begin to praise and you begin to lift up his name, you start to enter into his presence and you enter into a holy of holies where you sense God and who he is and you feel his presence and you worship him. Look, that's why being in church is so important. Because there's something special about joining with your church family. There's something special about being in that Grovetown campus or in that South campus, here in the Augusta campus, and you're here with other people, and you start to lift up praise. And as you start to lift up praise, what happens? The presence of the Lord comes and lives in those praises, and that we start to sense that this is more than just a classroom, that this is more than just a teaching session, but this is a place where we sense that God is here. There's something powerful about that. And we need that corporate experience together. But not only that, you need your daily quiet time. It's important during a daily quiet time that you refocus your attention away from yourself and onto the Lord. There's something about that. That's why um, a quiet time is important. That's why listening to encouraging music is important too. It starts to feed your spirit. Listening and encouraging music along the way. That's why I love Christmas music because Christmas music, you'll hear that all across the community during the season. I've been in uh, retail stores and hear that, that line, now fall on your knees. And I think about, wow, this, we're at the mall and they're playing that. 
There's something powerful about music that lifts up the soul. And so I encourage you to listen to that. Notice what the wise men did. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped. I'm going to talk about worship more next week. Here's the third thing. Surrendering to Jesus means laying down my plans. Laying down my plans. Letting go of our plans and letting God have his way in every aspect of our lives. We look at this gift of gold here that the wise men brought, and they were saying that, Jesus, you're the king, and we we submit to your authority. We're laying down our plans and say, you lead us and guide us and direct us. And this is so hard for me sometimes because I have a plan that I thought about, that I worked on, that I want to see happened. And there are times when God has something completely different. And it's like I have my plans and I go after it, but it's like a closed door. It's a closed door. I knock on that door. I push on that door. I try to make it happen, but it is a closed door because God has another plan. Oftentimes, God is working behind the scenes in your life, leading you and guiding you to the place that he wants you to be. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. I want you to hear these scriptures, these verses, as I read them over you. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. Oftentimes, God allows problems to develop in our lives so that he can use those problems to redirect us. The problems are like airplanes. They come and they land in our lives and then they take off and leave. As they're taking off and leaving, there's a good possibility another problem is landing in our lives. You've either just come out of a problem or you're about to go into a problem or you're stuck in a problem right now. That's just life. That's how it is. Why don't our plans work out? Or why do I have so many problems? That's probably a better question. Because you've heard people say that. Why? Why do I suffer so much? Why do I have so many problems? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know some things that maybe could provide some insight. First of all, we have problems because we make bad decisions. You make bad choices, and I do too. We, get, we don't use our time wisely. We get rushed. We get pressured. Uh, We have deadlines that are just basically impossible to meet. Uh, We don't use our money wisely. We don't eat right. We make all kind of bad decisions. And when we do that, we cannot blame God for that. Those are decisions that you have made and I've made. And so a lot of problems in our lives or in this world are, are there simply because we made bad decisions. Okay? Here's another reason there are problems. The second reason there's problems is that you have an enemy. You have a spiritual enemy, and his name is Satan. He is the devil. He is real, and he wants to defeat you. Jesus said, Satan comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. So you have this enemy that's warring against you. And then the third reason we have problems is that we live in a broken world. We live in a sin-cursed world. Our world is not perfect. Our world will never be perfect on this side. Everything in this planet is broken. Nothing works right. Your body doesn't work right all the time. Your relationships don't work right all the time. The economy does not work right all the time. The weather does not work right all the time. 
Nothing works right all the time because we live in a broken world. There's coming a new heaven and a new earth. And in the meantime, we've got to be good stewards of our world. But I'm telling you, you can spend billions and trillions of dollars on any type of green energy that you want, and you're not going to stop that this world is decaying and that there's a new world coming. I need to move on off of that. I could camp there a while. (laughs) Camp there a while. Stewardship is key. We've got to be better stewards of what we do, and um, you've got to be good stewards of money. You hear that, Washington? Good stewards of tax money. Here's the fourth and final one. Surrendering to Jesus means leaving the future. Hey, God, I'm, my future's in your hands. Leaving the future to God. I'm not going to try to live in the future. I'm going to live today. I'm going to embrace today, one day at a time. And no matter what's going on, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to put my confidence that he is guiding me. Listen to the words of Proverbs chapter 3. When it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him. In all of your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. We've got to trust. What does that mean? That I'm going to acknowledge God in every area of my life in my spiritual life, in my family life. I'm going to acknowledge him. I'm going to put him first. I'm going to trust him in my career. I'm going to trust him in in, uh, my friendships, in my finances, in my addictions, in my secrets. I'm going to say, God, I trust you to lead me. I'm going to surrender these things to you. God, take my life. I surrender this. So let me ask you a question. Are there any parts of your life that you have not surrendered to the Lord? Are there any parts of your life that you have not surrendered? How about your family? Give it over to the Lord. But you say, Marty, I'm going through a terrible divorce. Give it over to the Lord. You be the person that God's called you to be. What area of your life is not surrendered? That you're holding up a white flag and say, God, I'm giving it over to you. I'm surrendering it. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth, in my life as it is in heaven. There are often times that that I pray and and I use this phrase over and over, God, don't let anybody but Jesus run my life. Don't let anybody but Jesus run my life. I pray that over my my family, and I I call them out by name. And I say, God, don't let anybody but Jesus run my family. I pray over you, the church, this church, and this congregation. God, don't let anybody but Jesus run this congregation. I want Jesus to be Lord in our lives. I want Jesus to be king in this place. I've already started thinking that in about five weeks from now, we start 21 days of prayer. That we want to start at a place in the new year to say, God, get the junk out of our lives. And God, let us be focused on the power of the Holy Spirit and let us receive what you have for us. But you know what? We don't have to wait till 21 days of prayer. That can start right now. That this can be the moment. This can be the moment that you surrender this this thing in going on. And I don't know what that thing is for you. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's resentment. Maybe it's lack of forgiveness. Maybe it's an addiction. God, I'm giving it over to you. Jesus, I surrender. I surrender. Do you have any areas that you need to surrender? 
Today is your day. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over Stevens Creek Church. I pray that your presence would be strong in our church today. And as people all across this room start to to call out things that they need help with. God, we are surrendering these problems. We're surrendering this pain. We're surrendering this situation to you. And we're praying a simple prayer that says, help me. God, will you help me today? Say that. Say, God, will you help me today? God, we're crying out that you would help us. And Lord, we open up our hearts and lives and we receive what you have for us. With the heads still bowed, there may be some of you that you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. If that's you, I want to lead you in this prayer. Pray something like this. Say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Say, Jesus, save me. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, make me into the kind of person that you would have me to be. I give you my life. I give you my past, and I trust you with my future. God, I'm asking you to fill me. Say that. Say, God, I'm asking you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I receive what you have. Head still bowed. How many of you prayed that prayer with me today? And you will slip up your hand and say, Marty, that's me. All across this room, yes, yes. Yes. Father, let your peace rest upon the families of this church. God, fill us with your spirit. We receive what you have for us in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you today. Well, it's been a great morning, and it's getting even better. Uh, We get to celebrate across all of our campuses uh, over 30 people that are going public with their faith through a baptism service. And in this uh, service, we have eight folks that are going to be getting baptized. If you want to go ahead and line up, why don't we give a hand to everyone getting baptized this morning? Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, all that baptism is, is it's... Uh, taking that personal, that private decision that so many of you guys just made and going public with that and letting everybody know about the heart change that's gone on within you. Yeah, it's awesome. We're excited about uh, celebrating this with everybody here today. And, and so, uh, and, and again, 30 people across all three locations are being baptized today. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we can give that up one more time. Clapping for the people at South Augusta and at Grove Town as well. All right. You know, there's a party going on in heaven, and we want that party going on in this room. So we want to invite you all to be as loud as you can be, to be as redneck as you can be. Yeah, I was about to say, you told told the last service to be redneck. Yeah, there was a lot of screaming going on yesterday. I I know my neighbors called the police a few times on me during the game, but uh, we want you guys to be loud. We have signs. JT, uh, who, are you, who are you pulling for yesterday? I don't know if they want, want to hear that. We got <laughs> signs in the back over here. Uh, give it up for our Creek Kids Creek family. Kids back there, they're loud. They got signs. They're dressed like Santa Claus. All right. All right. But very first we have up in this service is we have Miss Kalina. Everybody give it up for Kalina today. All right. She describes her life before knowing Jesus as messy and dull, and she had a series of events to happen, and she knows that she wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Jesus' hand on her life. Since making a decision to follow Jesus, she is now more at ease and has a sense of peace. We are so proud of you today, and we pray God's peace over your life. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Today, it's my honor and it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, next up, we have Jonathan as he's making his way up the stairs. Jonathan grew up in a Christian home and was baptized as a young teenager, but he feels like he didn't fully know the decision that he was making. And he says that living with autism has led to a lot of jokes and bullying when he was younger. And through that, he learned the value of forgiveness. That's amazing. Uh, And since coming to the creek three years ago, 
He says that he no longer feels like he's doing life alone, and he now understands what it looks like to actually follow Jesus. Jonathan, we're so proud of the decision that you're making today, going public with your faith. Jonathan, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Today it is my privilege, it is my pleasure to baptize you, Jonathan, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's so awesome. Oh, that's Congratulations, incredible. Jonathan. Next up, we have Danielle. Give it up for Danielle, everybody. Danielle! Danielle left her whole life behind to protect her kids. Through all of the pain and hurt, she asked questions and doubted God while simultaneously watching her daughter, who was baptized at her last baptism celebration, grow closer to God and stronger in her faith. Danielle says she may not be perfect, but she is perfect in his eyes, and he never has never given up on her. He guides her, and he loves her. Danielle, we are so proud of you today, and we celebrate this decision that you've made. Amen. Amen. Danielle, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It's my privilege, and it's my pleasure to baptize you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's awesome. That's great. Well, next up, we have Trent. And Trent says that growing up with a preacher for a father, Trent always knew who God was, but since he wasn't fully involved at church, he was never baptized. And after his, uh, the recent passing of his father, he began to attend church again and become more involved. And his faith is the entire reason he's here today. And he goes through life confidently knowing that God has a plan. And today is the day that he is publicly professing his faith in Jesus Christ through the waters of baptism. Trent, congratulations, man. Amen. Trent, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. It is my privilege and pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's awesome, Trent. Congratulations. My favorite part about baptism is watching our family ministries yeah. come to life and celebrate all the students and Creek kids uh, that have given their life to Christ over the That's previous right. season. Uh, we'll give it up for our Creek kids family there in the back holding up some awesome all signs. Right. Be loud. But it's also yeah, getting to right see now. family units come together at special moments like this yep. and to be baptized together. Next up, we have Trent's nephew Vegas give it up for Vegas everybody Vegas that's a cool name Pastor Drew's going to be baptizing all these students but uh, Vegas's grandpa helped answer so many questions and helped him and helped lead him to the Lord recently he began growing going to church more and has grown in his relationship with Jesus and he's decided to take that next step and to go public with his faith through the waters of baptism congratulations buddy Vegas have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It's my privilege and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's go! All right! All right. And continuing with the family theme, uh, up next is Aria. This is Vegas' sister. Let's go, Aria! Let's go! The whole family. I love it. Ari accepted Christ when she went to Windshape Camp at Berry College. Come on. Uh, since then, she has continued to learn more about the Bible and has grown, grown closer to God. And today is uh, going public with her faith today. Aria, we're so excited for you. Aria, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It is my privilege and my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. That's awesome. Next up, we have Ace. Give it up for Ace. All these cool names. And his sister is up next, but Ace is a part of the student ministry. Has accepted Jesus Christ right into his heart, so that God can always be with him and to help him and navigate his life. 
Ace wants to be sure to live a life for God, filled with purpose and protection. And today we celebrate you, buddy. Ace, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It is my privilege and my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As JT mentioned, up next is Ace's sister, Ansley, <clears throat> stepping in. She's a part of our Creek Kids family, and she accepted Jesus because she wanted him as her Lord and Savior. And she said that before she was filled with worry and fear of things that she couldn't change. But now she is able to put all of her worries in his hands and be calm. Ansley, we're so proud of you and excited for the decision that you've made to follow Jesus. All right. Yeah. Give it up for everybody. Give it up for Miss Ainsley. Hey, why don't you do us a favor and stand to your feet, put yeah. your hands together, and let them know how glad you are that they yeah. have made that decision. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's awesome. <laughs> well, what an awesome day it's been today. We hope you have a blessed one. We'll see you guys next week and for our uh, Creek Blast next Sunday as well. You guys be blessed. Take care.